Hello, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday again. Time for a fresh word from the landing. We hope you're all doing well. We hope you're hanging in there during this prolonged self-isolation uh, and this pandemic that seems to have its grip not only on the country, but on the whole world. Everywhere you look, do you ever get tired of all the talk about death? Do you get tired about all the talk about uh, numbers, statistics rising and death being minimized? down to just a curve that needs to be flattened. Um, you hear about death in other countries. We hear about death that's happening in other uh, places of the world and in other places of our own country. I can report that there's a professor that I knew down at Southern Seminary named Timothy Paul Jones, whose daughter Hannah uh, had contracted COVID-19, but she is recovering. She's out of the hospital. And she's back home and doing well. So there's lots of hope in the midst of all the talk about death. What's even more disturbing, it seems to me, especially in the wider culture, is that there is very little talk about God. There's very little talk about hope that we have in God. There's very little talk about heaven or hell, about the help that God can provide. And, and maybe someone is facing death for some other reason other than the coronavirus. And yet there's very little room in our culture to talk about the, the power of God over death, the power of Christ, power of Christ in the resurrection, and the comfort and the hope and the confidence that's supposed to give to us every single day to endure simple and basic things or dramatic and horrible things. I want to give you some passages from, from Scripture meant to help encourage you have a strong, bold faith that is not gripped by fear, fear of death your own or anyone else's. We're meant to live in the freedom and the peace and the assurance that Christ gives, not just because he died on the cross for us, but because he rose again. And at the end of this video, you'll see a link to a song that uh, I came across yesterday on Justin Taylor's website on the Gospel Coalition, where he's examining several hymns as they're being remade, and it's called Because He Lives used to be sung or originally sung by the Bill Gaither Trio, now sung by our friends down at Passion City Church, David Crowder and others, uh, giving a new twist on it. It's very powerful. I hope you get a chance to listen to it. Here are those passages of scripture. First, out of Acts 17, verses 30 through 31, Paul is speaking and he's proclaiming the gospel to unbelievers that are listening to him. He, he says, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent which is exactly what God is calling us to do in this day, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. So because Christ is raised from the dead, we know God will come back and by that risen Christ, he will judge the world. Maybe that's one of the reasons why our world is so eager to ignore God and his resurrected son. Here's another passage. For all those who are believing in Christ, they're not only going to be resurrected, in a sense, they already are. Listen to Colossians 2. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, that's our new birth, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. We are raised with Christ. That's where we are. And our bodies and our souls and our identities will be reunited together when we enter heaven with him. So that means when God comes back through Christ to judge the world, we who are believing in Christ will not experience his return as wrath. So Paul says to the Thessalonians, Wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So think of it this way. All the hardships believers endure now and into the future are not God's anger against us. They're sifted. They're purified. They're given to us to, to strengthen and sanctify, to purify us, to make us more like Christ. But they're not because God's angry at us. There's no wrath for us remaining any longer, according to Romans 8.1. There is wrath for the world as long as they continue to reject and refuse the offer 
of the gospel that's found alone in Jesus Christ. So we who are believers should have a markedly different view of death than everyone else who doesn't know Christ. We should be comforted even through death. Not that we are casual about it. Death is an enemy and we hate it. But it's a defeated and a defanged enemy. Listen to the tone, even the hope Abraham had when God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Listen, Hebrews eleven nineteen. 19. Abraham considered that God was able even to raise his son from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive his son Isaac back. You can obey every command, even the hard ones from God, when you know the resurrection is true. So if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If anybody's watching this video and you feel like death is encroaching every aspect of your life and you never expected life to feel like this, look to Christ. Confess him with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Great truth. Well, listen to this song from the praise musicians from Passion City Church down in Atlanta, Georgia. The pastor there is a great pastor. Louis Giglio is his name. They've taken some older songs and they've redone them in a powerful way. They've done that with this song called Because He Lives, written by Bill and Gloria Gaither. They wrote it in 1969, even before they had formed the Bill Gaither Trio. Bill and Gloria Gaither were a young couple. Uh, it was winter time. They lived in northern Indiana. The weather was terrible. Bill himself had contracted mononucleosis, a severe disease, and he was very sick. His wife had just discovered that they were expecting their first child. They had come under false accusation in their local church. And on top of all that, they looked in the culture around them and they saw in schools and in songs and in poems and in magazines and books, everyone was proclaiming God is dead. If you lived back in the 60s or early 70s, you might remember that. Well, they're saying God is dead again today, aren't they? Lots of people are trying to declare that God is dead. Well, he's not dead. God our Father is beyond life and death. He's the ancient of days, the ever-living one, the existing one. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God himself fully in every way that God the Father is God and God the Spirit is God, and he reigns and exists forever as well. So also there's the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God, who is himself God. God is not dead, even though many who claim that he is dead, seem to have the upper hand. Well, in the midst of all this, George Gaither, Bill's dad, came to his son, who was very sick, and to his pregnant daughter-in-law, and he gave them a word of encouragement from the resurrection of Christ. He shared with them, very simply, the power, the hope, the comfort, the assurance we can have that Jesus Christ rules and reigns. He is Lord. It isn't just that he was Lord. Jesus is alive and reigning. Therefore, Jesus is Lord. And that comforted Bill and Gloria so much that they end up, ended up writing this song that so many have loved because he lives. You know, when I hear this song, it so much reminds me of my dad singing it when I was younger that I don't even really hear the Gaithers singing it. I hear my dad's own voice singing it. It's a song that means a lot to me because it's true and because it represents a faith that I hope to carry on from my dad and pass on to my son and daughter and daughter-in-law and to any who I have the privilege of sharing it with. Hope you're doing well. I hope this encourages you. Listen to the song, Hope in Christ, the risen and reigning one. He is Lord. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon, Lord willing. Take care.